Let's run a container from Docker Hub. Docker Hub is the world's easiest way to create, manage, and deliver containers according to their official documentation. If I go to Docker Hub, one of the nice things about it is I can sign in if I want, or uh, I can also go through here and look at uh, existing containers. So one that's a, a good container to look at is uh, Jupyter, right? So if I wanted to set up a Jupyter-based environment on my OS 10 or Windows machine, it could be quite complex. And one of the nice things about this Jupyter-based workflow is I could just scroll down here and do this Docker pull command, right? So if I go here and I copy it and I go over to this terminal, uh, I can actually paste this in and set up a very complex Jupyter notebook workflow that the experts that created Jupyter uh, can give me. So uh, one of the things that's powerful about this uh, ecosystem is that later I could uh, then go through and try out different versions or uh, maybe a more complex Jupyter setup without having to do anything to my local environment. So you can see here that I've downloaded that newer image, great. So let's look at the official docs here and uh, see how we could actually leverage this. So one of the things that we could do is we could say this, we could say Docker run and if I wanted to physically run the latest copy, I could say Docker run uh, Jupyter SciPy Notebook and put colon latest if I wanted to get the latest or some other version. So let's go ahead and do that. And what will happen is it'll spawn open a Jupyter Notebook that has got all the latest features and everything installed for me. And this is really a big deal in the fact that uh, it eliminates a vector of uh, really confusion. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm going to uh, put this in and there we go. So now you can see that I've got a Jupyter instance running. Uh, and in fact, uh, I can see the output is in foreground mode here. So if you're playing around with uh, Jupyter and Python, this is probably the recommended workflow uh, for many people, especially if you're new to data science. Uh, and if I go here and I say new, I can select Python 3 if I want, or I could even select a terminal. So let's try that out real quick and just see what's going on here. If I say uname-a, you can see that it's actually running Linux itself. So that's one of the really powerful things about this particular environment. I could even run top, right? I can see what's going on in this particular machine. And so it's a, it's a really powerful way to develop uh, locally without having to really maintain this extremely complex workflow. So. Next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say new, I'm gonna say Python 3, and I'll go through here and try something out. So here's a pandas library. So I'll say import pandas as PD. This is a very common workflow uh, as a data scientist. And I'll create a data frame. I'll say pd.read uh, CSV. And I happen to have some data uh, that I've used previously uh, in terms of my research in sugar consumption, and I'm gonna uh, put this inside of this uh, URL, right? And then I'll create this data frame. And if I say df.describe, you'll be able to see, I'll just tab complete that. There we go. <clears throat> you'll be able to see all of the descriptive statistics. So this shows the sugar consumption uh, by state and by education level, right? And so there's a correlation between uh, education and sugar intake, uh, negative correlation. So what we're gonna do next here is do a plot. So I'll say df.plot, and then you can see there's a visualization. So in a nutshell, really powerful way to develop complex applications without having to touch your operating system at all. The container itself solves a problem for you. So I think whether it's a Jupyter Notebook or it's a Postgres database, or it's, uh, let's say, a, a big data system, this is the way to go in terms of simplifying how to get involved with systems engineering.